Hello and welcome to another science tutor video. I'm your tutor Nathan and in this video we're going to discuss Newton's laws of motion. So Newton's laws of motion are principles proposed by Isaac Newton, Sir Isaac Newton, and the reason for proposing these principles is to explain some physical observations of motion. All right. So the reason behind proposing these principles was to explain some physical observations about motion in your everyday life. All right. So. Newton's laws give you an idea about the physics that is taking place in everyday occurrences, everyday situations involving motion. So it explains why objects that are raised some heights above the ground and let go free fall under gravity. It explains why a moon can be in orbit around the planet things like those can explain why if you launch a cannonball or a projectile from a cannon it will travel over a curved path and fall back to ground eventually and it explains many more things right? these laws can be used to explain almost every major if not every major observation of motion that you can make in the physical world. So Newton's first law states that an object at rest will remain at rest and an object in motion will remain in motion with uniform velocity unless an external net force acts on it. Notice I've underlined uniform velocity and net force. Those are two important things about this law. In simple terms, Newton's first law states that objects do not speed up or slow down by themselves. So if you have an object resting on a table, it will remain there for as long as no net force acts on it. If you apply a net force to it, then the object will move off the table and eventually drop to the ground. But it will not move as long as no net force acts on it. Similarly, if you're on a smooth surface, like if you're ice skating or on a skateboard and you're moving with a constant velocity V at one point in time, if no external force acts on you, if nothing, no drag or no resistive force acts to slow you down, then you will continue moving with that velocity V. Right? So, that's Newton's first law. Objects don't speed up or slow down by themselves. They travel with uniform, constant velocity unless an external force acts on them. Newton's second law of motion states that when a net force, which has the symbol capital F, acts on an object with mass, m, it produces an acceleration, which has symbol lowercase a, which is proportional to the force applied. This law of Newton's can be represented in equation form. F is equal to m times a or a is equal to f divided by m. And what this law basically tells you is that if an object is accelerating it means some force is acting on it and the size of the force acting on it is determined by the size of the acceleration and the mass of the object. Key thing to note is that acceleration is equal to the rate of change of velocity. So we'll get to that shortly. Now imagine that you have a hillside and at one point in time a small car is traveling down the hillside and let's say it's traveling with a velocity v of 10 meters per second. The car has a mass mc, mass of the car. 
and at some later point in time at some later point in time you have a large truck also traveling down the same path traveling down a hillside with the same speed v is equal to 10 meters per second now let's suppose that they both have to slow down to avoid a danger an obstacle down the road and let's say that they both need to slow down to a velocity of zero meters per second need to come to a stop in a time period t let's say t is maybe 10 seconds and the mass of the truck mt is 20 times the mass of the car they both have to cover the same range of velocity or the same change in velocity in the same amount of time so the same they have the same velocity difference 10 meters per second and they have to cover that range of velocity in 10 seconds they have to slow down from 10 meters per second to zero in 10 seconds so they both have the same acceleration or they both require the same acceleration to slow down to avoid the obstacle However, if the force required by the car's braking system is equal to the mass of the car times the acceleration required, then the force required to slow down the truck, the braking force for the truck, will be equal to the mass of the truck times the acceleration required. But remember, the mass of the truck is 20 times the mass of the car times acceleration. So the force required for the truck to slow down will be equal to 20 times the force required to slow down the car. And the reason for that is because the mass of the truck is 20 times the mass of the car. So the force required to produce the given acceleration depends on the mass of the object. Or alternatively, the force required to accelerate a certain mass depends on the acceleration required. So that's Newton's second law. So Newton's third law states that when one object, A, exerts an action force on another object, B, the second object, which in this case is B, exerts a reaction force equal in magnitude and opposite in direction to the first force. I've underlined some key words here in the video. I want you, if you're taking notes, to do the same as well. And so a practical example is, if you lean up against a wall or rest against it, exerting a force along your arm or whatever part of you is in contact with the wall, you are not moving. So even though exerting a force against the wall, some force is acting in the opposite direction balancing out your force and keeping you from accelerating towards the wall. That is the reaction force that the wall is exerting on you. Right? So this is what Newton's third law tries to explain. If an object exerts an action force on another object, the second object will exert a reaction force of the same size but in the opposite direction to the first force. So it balances out the two forces. So this video has been an introduction to Newton's three laws of motion. Please review the video. And if you have any problems, leave us a comment. If you found it helpful, then feel free to like and share the video. And please stay tuned for the next video in the series.